yeah dvd youtube welcome back to my channel if you're new make sure you take a second to like comment and subscribe share with a friend share with somebody who's interested of course this video i'm going to be recapping collaborative health nursing collab is my second to last class so i'm now in capstone which is my last last class and it was it was sufficiently intense it wasn't horrible or unbearable but it definitely tries to quickly whip you into shape for how to get structured and prepared for the NCLEX. It's a class within a class. Like it's a class within a class, okay? Let me explain that. The class of collaborative is about leadership. So you get a lot of select all that apply questions. I guess the purpose of that is to try to get you to practice your prioritization, your delegation and patient safety. I don't really know. And my, my personal opinion is that it was just to be torturous, but you know, whatever you think teaches them, it's a class within the class. So what I mean by that is you have your main class, which is the leadership course. You're basically just learning what are the roles of the RN, what's in your scope of practice, which is super important. You definitely wanna know what's in your scope so that if someone asks you to do something outside of your scope, you can quickly be like, no baby, you do that yourself because that's your license at the end of the day. You gotta protect it at all costs. At, at, at this cost, baby, this, this education is not cheap. It's expensive, so you wanna protect your license. The amount of time and dedication you spent going into school, yeah, no. So you definitely wanna know your scope of practice super important you can get that from the ana the ncb child i don't know these acronyms but i'm gonna post the acronyms here but you can get them from those places and it'll tell you what's in your scope and also very important to know as well like different jurisdictions have different laws so if you're in new york versus jersey versus georgia versus florida texas you're gonna have different laws because every state is kind of its own entity your scope that leads right into delegation so then you also need to know what's in the lpn scope or if your state even uses lpns usually they'll be more inclined to do like wound care type of stuff so when you see questions that's like oh which patient would you delegate to the lpn usually it's stuff that's like wound care or PO medications, they won't, most states, I don't think, there might be one state, but most states don't allow LPNs to do IV medications or injections. And you then wanna also know, okay, well then what's in your AP scope? And that could be like a CNA, a nurse tech. If a patient is critical, has a high acuity for their care, don't give that patient to an AP. It's just, don't do it. Even if it's like something maybe you want to call it tedious such as if they're total care and they need like a full bath they need a bed bath they need or they need help getting to the bath get into the bathroom they're a forest you take care of that patient yourself that is your patient first okay if anything goes wrong with that patient and you delegate it to the ap that's your fault it's going to fall back on you you're the one who's going to have to write the incident report not the ap so at the end of the day i feel like it's just safer to view these patients on your own terms to make sure that they're okay and also it's a very good opportunity for you to make an assessment a full assessment of your patient as well so if you have a patient that you recognize is kind of critical doing a bed bath is like you can assess them for sores skin integrity kind of the same thing but their love of consciousness their gait like you can assess a whole lot in that kind of intimate setting so definitely you want to know what to delegate what not to delegate that's like a huge part of that le the leadership portion of this course otherwise besides delegation it's really prioritization and this is something i feel like you just really have to practice it you got to spend some time figuring out how to recognize what's priority so of course you know you have your abcs that framework is definitely tried and true and for those of you who don't know who are like just starting off on your nursing journey your abcs are airway breathing and circulation so those three things will be your priority action usually in that order usually as well so if someone's airway is occluded in any way or obstructed or seems like it may be so this could be maybe they have an allergic reaction and they're having anaphylaxis um anything to do with their throats closing it's swelling if they have if they have epiglottitis and there's frequent swallowing or if they had tonsils removed tonsillectomy and there's frequent swallowing 
anything like that that can maybe signal to you that okay that patient's gonna have difficulty breathing number one priority because you can't do nothing with a dead patient if the patient's not breathing he's gonna die airway breathing of course along the same lines and then circulation would be more like if you notice that the patient's leg is kind of getting red and it's warm or maybe it's swollen and it's like not it's unilateral swollen so sometimes patients can have edema on both sides but that happens with a lot of disease processes especially if they have like heart conditions lung conditions but if they have a new a unilateral swelling that is more so significant because it's telling you that they're probably throwing a clot they probably have a dbt which is can travel to become a pulmonary embolism, can travel to become a stroke, can travel to become a lot of things, and all of them are bad. That's circulation. So those three things are really important. And then you wanna know like, you know, the vital signs that you wanna definitely keep up with to make sure you're monitoring that. So your, your pulse oximetry, very important for that. Your BP is more for the circulation, your pulse ox, more for the airway, breathing, and yeah, that's really the main stuff with leadership. I'm trying to think what else besides delegation and prioritization. We did a little bit of disaster stuff as well. So like how to run a cold, when it's triage. We also have quite a few Sims and these Sims are in person as well. So that was cool to actually use all the expensive mannequins that my money is paying for. We had one particular simulation where we had like five patients and we had to figure out, and we were in like in little small groups, so like groups of four. We had to figure out, okay, which patient to treat first, which patient is most urgent. And it just basically requires the same kind of thought process, the same kind of framework. There's a patient who is desatin, or they, I mean, they, or they, maybe they started off at 80, 85% oxygenation with already with a nasal cannula. Then you want to think like, okay, they need a non-rebreather. We need to crank them up to 15 liters or, you know, whatever the case is. So, and you need to know like, okay, that patient's more important than the one who stubbed his toe and needs a little band-aid. So just like that kind of prioritization. So outside of leadership, there's also the capstone. So the capstone assignment is, let me see if I can actually log into it still. Okay, I think I figured it out. So, you log into your ATI account, you go to My ATI, you then go to NCLEX Prep. So this will, it's very exciting being at this stage because you get a bunch of NCLEX Prep stuff that you didn't have before. So you get like this Board Vitals NCLEX Prep quiz bank, which is different than adaptive quizzing. It's, it seems similar, but it's different. And it's 3,000 or something crazy question, 3,500 questions. You definitely wanna do all of them, by the way. Come on, y'all, get y'all practicing. The NCLEX Experience RN, um, this ATI capstone contact, virtual ATI review, that's the baddie, that's for capstone, so we'll talk about that in my next recap, not for this one. The capstone I'm talking about is this one right here, which is the ATI capstone classroom. These are, well, all of my modules are obviously complete now because, you know, I did them, but you usually start with your comprehensive exam, then you have like an orientation and then you go through all of the modules, all of the specialties that we have gone through in this program. So you have your fundies, you see like <laughs> that pre-assessment quiz, I just went in, I, I raw dogged it, I got a 50 and that's not cute. But you see that I got a 10 out of 10. So that 10 out of 10, that's basically indicative of how the entire course is. So it's very easy to get an A in this course because I would say it's graded like 90% on completion versus correctness. So the only things that were graded on correctness is your med calc, your capstone predictor A and your capstone predictor B and your CMS. So those four things are graded on correctness. Everything else is graded just on completion. So after I did my pre-assessment quiz, as you can see here, I then did a bunch of modules, which is like, basically it's giving me time to review, to study, go back through the things I didn't know. And then I did my assessment. I got a 72. Improve, it's improvement, okay? It's not really given, but it's improvement. So we're gonna take it. And then after that point, you get some remediation work. I don't think I can show you that because ATI I don't play about that stuff and I ain't trying to get in trouble. But you do some remediation, which is what your ATI coach gives you. This is my ATI coach up here in the corner. And she it's like a message board that you can use to talk to them. 
and then after you do the remediation then you can go ahead and do the post assignment now i know i did good on that i don't know why that grade's not going to show up you see how they're trying to play me so for each of these modules fundamentals pharmacology adult med surge mother baby peds mental health leadership commu and community all of them are 30 points each each of those modules so like all together it's like 270 to 300 points just in this and it's all core points so can you imagine you're just getting free core points it's very hard to like do poorly in this class that's the ati capstone portion of it and i will say that it is nice that you're no you're starting to do like a kind of more comprehensive reviews of stuff because some of those things just really like they kind of faded you realize how much things have kind of faded throughout the program especially if it's a class you didn't care about like for me mental health mm, could care less couldn't care less and so going back and reviewing i'm like damn like did i how did i pass this class did i learn anything did i know anything like you feel like yeah you feel like yeah what the heck but it's good that it's pointing out all of the important portions and i don't know i mean i i get asked all the time by people do i feel like chamberlain is adequately preparing me for the nclex yes yes i yes i genuinely do i know a lot of nurses who started and went through chamberlain and they're thriving they're doing great but i personally after taking collaborative i feel I feel good about what I've reviewed so far. I definitely have a ton more to do now. Like, it's so much, but for the time being, I feel good about it so far. Yeah, that's really what I mean by saying like, it's a class within a class. They run two separate routes as well. So your leadership portion is what your professor is going to be dealing with and stuff, your grades and everything. And then the capstone portion is who your NCLEX mentor will be doing. So your NCLEX mentor is somebody that they just randomly assign to you. I don't know if some schools do it by last names or whatever the case is, but that person deals with your capstone and they're the ones who are going to review your remediation. They're gonna review if they feel like you adequately reviewed and if you if you are prepared for moving on to the next level. So it's good to develop a little relationship with them and try to be as thorough as possible when you're doing your remediation, not for them, not to say for them to say you passed, but for yourself so that you're not doing as much work later. Like you want to make sure you know the things that you have missed. So other things about this course as well, there's a lot of busy work in my opinion, like way too much honestly for what the class requires. But for example, there's an assignment and I talked about this in one of my vlogs recently, but there was an assignment where we had to attend four different sessions and it's basically just forced NCLEX review and basically what the professor did was go through all of the different topics that are going to be in the NCLEX, so health promotion and wellness, patient safety, basic care and comfort, all of these different topics that are going to be on the NCLEX and um, the percentages of the portion that's going to be on of each section in, on the NCLEX and then went through a bunch of review questions, went through how to identify the type of questions and how to answer them and stuff like that. But that was just like a long review and it had to be a live review. It wasn't like a recording you could find online, though we had to do some of those as well where we just watch pre-recorded lectures. So it's definitely a lot in my opinion. It feels like kind of tedious at points, but at the same time, like I said, it's really good to push you to start your review process if you have not already. So I wasn't mad about it. It was just, I mean, I wasn't mad about it. I was mad about it. But um, I'm, I'm grateful at the end of the day because I want to do well and I feel like this is gearing me up to do well. We also have quite a few visits from campus presidents and deans and stuff like that. Just getting us ready to start applying for licensure. That's going to be a whole separate video all on itself because it's a very involved process depending on your state. Of course, New York so far seems to be the most involved for whatever ghetto reason. Yeah, I don't get it because they definitely have the greatest need for nurses and not even just, you know, to shade them, just purely on the strength of them having such a large population. I also heard as well, I've been told that they're taking the longest time with their licensing as well, like couple of months after you take the NCLEX and pass they, they're taken to send you a license which is crazy whereas like Jersey and Pennsylvania other other states in the area they're like much quicker like a week turnaround kind of thing 
we're definitely in the process of that i've already registered for pearson view for my state board of nursing where i'm going to be taking um where i need my NCLEX to be sent to and my NCLEX results rather and then there's a bunch of other things too as well which I, i'm probably gonna have to make a separate video just detailing all of the last minute things that you have to do towards the end such as like the registering for pearson view all of the fees that are associated with it because it gets expensive you have separate fees for separate things so for example and this is all stuff we did in collaborative so like i said we're just gearing up for the NCLEX at this point it's not any new information it's just making sure you know your foundation um so for example the pearson view itself like for the NCLEX exam is 200 dollars. so there's one fee then your state board of nursing like so let's say new york since we're talking about it that's 130 130 dollars that's just to apply to that state board and you want to look at their website to make sure you meet their requirements because each state is different again different jurisdictions and then you'll have another fee again you have to do fingerprinting background check child abuse clearances and stuff like that all in all my professor said estimate to spend like 500 dollars which is that's pretty accurate i think on all of it if you're you know not considering if you're like moving or anything like that a lot of the boards of nursing also require you to send your transcripts so i already ordered my transcripts but you just want to make sure you click send after degree is completed so that it'll send it like your last day of the program and not right now because then you have to get it sent again because capstone obviously is not going to be listed on there and yeah so it, it's been definitely a lot a lot of time management Oh, I didn't say this earlier, but another big portion is also referrals. So when to refer to different health professions. So when to refer to occupational therapy, when to refer to speech language pathology, um, social work was a big one. When to refer to social work, which would be like, you know, the patient can't afford their meds. They're having trouble with transportation. They're having trouble getting to and fro with their appointments. But yeah, it's really good that we're getting put in the in the mind space and the structure of studying for NCLEX every Wednesday your first pre-assessment and assessment is due for each of those subjects that I just showed you every Wednesday if it's not ter turned in by Wednesday you're gonna get a zero I think if you if you're paying attention one of my classes I believe it was mother baby I got a zero for one of those tens because I didn't turn in by Wednesday I still did it because it's for me not for them I needed to make sure I reviewed that info and plus you know I love mother baby but I somehow over, I don't know, I think I overslept and I woke up and it was like 1 a.m. And I was like, oh no, do it by Wednesday. And then the second section is due by Sunday. And it's every week. So the first week will be fundamentals. Second week will be pharmacology. Third week will be adult health. So with pharmacology and med surge as well, you have double the work. Just probably because the classes are so important and so dense. So you have double the assignments and double the assessments for farm and, and med surge so take that into account when you're preparing your week or you're making plans especially if you're taking this class like in a couple of days because it is summertime and you know you want to be out in the streets but baby we're not hot girls this summer we are warm girls we maybe can be a little bit warm lukewarm girls but we're not hot girls this summer we we got degrees to get and we gotta be focused so yeah once you get into the rhythm of how they structure it it'll be really good for you moving forward especially because now i'm in my vaddy which is basically like ati capstone for the capstone course and it is it is like the ati capstone course i just took but on steroids it is so much it is so much I've only, it's not even, I mean, class hasn't even started yet. Like, I'm still in my, like, my little summer break, and I'm already, like, overwhelmed. I'm like, wow, damn. This time period will definitely be spent honing in because I intend to take my NCLEX as soon as possible. I'm not waiting. If I could take it on the day that I graduate, I'm taking it that day. So, I am doing the most that I can right now to get prepared. I will do a whole separate video on my process to prepare for taking the exam, if you guys are interested forgot to take off my ghetto glasses this whole time why y'all ain't tell me but if you guys are interested of course definitely let me know either way and um if there's anything else you guys want to know as well make sure you comment down below i'm an open book i'm here i'm your roadmap i do not want you struggling through this i want you guys to be okay if you're feeling overwhelmed just practice some self-care i know it sounds like a lot because it is i'm gonna sugarcoat it it's a lot 
but you can do it you made it this far we are here we're at the finish line um yeah we, we we got this guys we got this you just gotta really make sure you're staying focused and prioritizing yourself and your education first your family needs stuff tell them you don't have no family today tell them you are not available if your friends are mad at you because you're not having a hot girl summer with them tell them you got them next year tell them next year they're gonna get food out to greece i mean by you if you want to or by whoever but tell them y'all gonna go on a trip next year you're gonna do your little girl's trip to jamaica or to tulum like everybody wants to go tell them it's gonna happen next year but this year you gotta focus and it's okay we're all in this together yeah we're all in this okay so sorry that's all i got for this recap i know this is these videos have been extra long but yeah make sure you like comment and subscribe share with somebody who needs the info and i'm super excited to be at this point guys it's really good it's all up and up positive vibe positive energy so going into this new session good luck to everyone comment down below what class you're in right now also so i can know kind of where my followers are at so that i can know how to tailor my videos as well because i feel like a lot of you guys are still like more towards the beginning i know there's a few people who are like right behind me but i feel like most of you are like more like med surgery so let me know thank you guys for watching love you guys look at more so i'm sitting here editing and i realized that i completely forgot to talk about how the first day of collaborative was so it was the first time that we actually had like a large assessment on the first day usually every first day we have our med calc exam and so we did have the med calc exam but then we also had our first capstone a predictor i had mentioned it i said there were four things that were counted for correctness so with the capstone exam on the first day i believe it was 80 questions and it was just like a comprehensive exam we there was no study guide given you just had to go in blind and just see where you are and that was on the first day as well so we had med calc a little break and then that capstone exam and then we had the capstone b on the last day of class so um i guess the idea is that we're supposed to improve over the course and review the modules and things that we don't know but i honestly got the same grade on both a and b so i guess i didn't improve but whatever i'm still in that 70s range so yeah i forgot to mention that it was kind of off-putting because i didn't i don't think i knew beforehand that i was going to get two exams on the first day and then i got in there and i was like dog this ain't it but yeah it wasn't horrible but definitely definitely got to build your stamina coming towards the end because in that this is collaborative now but in capstone the course we have a 130 question exam to start and then the exit exam is 180 questions i believe or 160 something like that so you got to build your stamina up so that's all i wanted to say